I'm Erin Falo. This is News 9 Plus on Facebook, X, and YouTube. All eyes are on New Hampshire this morning with our first in the nation primary now just one week away. It comes after former President Donald Trump won Iowa's Republican caucuses yesterday. He took 51% of the vote, putting him well ahead of second place finisher Don Ron DeSantis, who had 21%. Nikki Haley came in third with 19%. Democrats did not have an in-person caucus in Iowa. Instead, they made their choices by mail, and those results will not be released until Super Tuesday on March 5th. After declaring victory, Trump took a moment to thank his supporters in the Hawkeye State. The big night is going to be in November when we take back our country, and truly, we do make our country great again. Thank you very much, everybody. To be here. You know, this was supposed Today, to be the former president is expected back in New York for the second E. Jean Carroll trial. A jury is determining how much he will have to pay in damages for defaming the columnist in 2019 when he made statements denying her rape allegations. After that, the former president is scheduled to come here to New Hampshire, where he has an event scheduled at the Atkinson Country Club this evening. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis is also wasting no time getting back on the campaign trail following his second place finish out in Iowa. Because of your support, in spite of all of that that they threw at us, everyone against us, we've got our ticket punched out of Iowa. DeSantis will be in South Carolina today before he sets his sights on New Hampshire. He's set to hold a town hall in Claremont tonight. Nikki Haley arrived in New Hampshire early this morning and she is coming into the Granite State with an endorsement from Governor Chris Sununu. He said that he was hoping she would have a strong finish in Iowa. She came in third. Despite that, Haley is staying optimistic. Our political director, Adam Sexton, caught up with her for an exclusive interview as she was getting ready to leave Iowa and fly to Manchester late last night. And she had this message for New Hampshire voters. Here we come. This is about a new generational leader. This is about putting the past behind us, the chaos behind us, and America deserves a new conservative generational leader to carry us forward. WMUR is teaming up with ABC to host a presidential debate this Thursday, and our coverage begins at 8 o'clock with a pre-show followed by the debate at 9 p.m. Well, now to the other big story of the day, the weather. And here's a live look at 293 out there in Manchester. We have hundreds of schools that have canceled for the day. It is an impact weather day with snow making for a slick ride on many roads this morning. We do want to check in with meteorologist Kevin Skrupa to find out when the snow is going to move out. Yeah, this is a most of the day situation and probably into the early evening before a back edge makes its way through. And so it's kind of a longer duration, lighter snow that we will see kind of fill in through the day. Temps will likely be in the 20s and below the freezing mark as it happens. So a little bit of a fluffier nature to the snow. At the same time, there could be some slippery spots because temperatures will be below 32. The snow has been slowly navigating its way northward up through central parts of the state, not quite into the north country yet, but even there, the expectation is that you will see some of the snow as we go through the afternoon. You can see the more organized portion of this still back out through New York and Pennsylvania. That'll be working its way in later this morning and into the afternoon. So 20s for most today as that light snow continues. Again, it is kind of a longer duration, lighter snow that it will be falling lightly enough in most cases that crews should be able to keep up with this through the day, but enough to make it slippery out there through the afternoon. There is your back edge moving across the state between 5 and 8 this evening. Quick clearing behind it overnight and a brisk wind for the next few days. And then plenty of clouds around on Friday ahead of even colder air heading in for the weekend. General 3 to 6 inches of snow. There could be a couple of higher hilltops or an area that stays under a moderate snow for a little bit longer than everywhere else that you see a stray seven or eight inch amount, but generally a light to moderate snowfall out of this, maybe a little bit of mixing right at the coastline as the system winds down. So 20s for the next few days. Tomorrow will be with a brisk wind and then Thursday will be with a lingering breeze. Plenty of clouds, a few flurries Friday. That will be the leading edge of even colder air. Highs only in the teens to lower 20s. Wind chills will likely be in the single digits Saturday above and below zero and then probably starting the day on Sunday also with wind chills in the single digits. This is kind of one of those colder weekends on the way. Kind of a feels like winter forecast here. At 34 at the end of the seven day forecast, probably the beginning of some moderation trend heading through most of next week 
including primary Tuesday. And it is really coming down out there. This is a mm -hmm. live look at 93 and it is blowing around as well, making visibility kind of tough. In yeah, some it looks like visibility at about a half mile at the present time. That means about a quarter to a half inch per hour as far as the snowfall rates. And again, kind of a fluffy snow and you can see that you have the tire tracks out there. So you, crews should be able to keep up with this through the day as we go forward through the afternoon. So many kids have the day off, but it's not really that snowman making snow, is it? <laughs> um, except maybe in some southern locations. Yeah, this is a much fluffier snow. It'll be easy to move around if you have to clean it up later on today. Good day for sledding. That too. All right, Kevin, thank you so much. Well, today a final hearing is being held before Adam Montgomery's upcoming murder trial. Montgomery is accused of killing his daughter Harmony in 2019 when she was five years old. The state's witness list is nearly 200 names long and includes multiple members of Montgomery's family. The state's star witness is expected to be his estranged wife, Kayla. Montgomery's defense team plans to call only two people to the witness stand, and the trial is scheduled to start on February 6th. State investigators tell News 9 that they may have found the source of the Legionnaire's disease that sickened two people. DHHS says that it believes that it may have come from a hot tub at the Mount View, uh, Mountain View Grand Resort in Whitefield. A woman from Massachusetts died from Legionnaire's after staying there. Another person from Rhode Island was hospitalized. There have been no additional confirmed cases. A new study claims that New Hampshire is one of the worst states to drive in, and today it's going to be pretty challenging out there with the snow. Wallet Hub compiled a list based on factors including gas prices, road quality, and rush hour traffic. New Hampshire ranked 39th in the country, and the main factors that brought the score down were weather, traffic, and infrastructure. The Granite State did come in first for the lowest car theft rate, and by the way, Iowa was deemed the best state to drive in. Of course, those candidates heading to New Hampshire will notice a bit of a difference in the road conditions here in New Hampshire, at least this morning. Do drive carefully out there. Thanks for joining us for News 9 Plus here on Facebook, X, and YouTube. Have a great day.